Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arctic Welding. My name's Dusty. In today's episode, we're gonna do a part two of the filler rod technique series. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up, welcome back. And to anybody that may be new to the channel, what's up, welcome, I appreciate you stopping by to watch the video. If you are new, I definitely recommend that you bounce back. Check out the other videos in the catalog. I do a lot of stuff on this channel, but everything I do is TIG welding related. So if you're down with TIG welding or if you're interested in art with uh, welding and stuff like that, I definitely recommend you bounce back. Check out the other episodes in my catalog. We do a lot of different things on this channel. Uh, one of my main favorite things to do is I do TIG welding art. Uh, I do crazy art pieces where I really push myself to do some wild stuff. Uh, with the skill of TIG welding that I've taken 18 or so years to learn. Uh, I do two-dimensional uh, paintings basically with TIG welding. I also do 3D sculptures and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, be sure to check them out. Also on the channel, I do TIG welding gear reviews. Uh, I get gear, uh, whether it's from the shop, just stuff I use commonly here. I'll give reviews and demos on stuff. Well, the other thing I do is I do how-tos. So today is kind of a how-to as well. So today, we're going over it again. I did an episode uh, a couple months ago or so. Uh, we did TIG welding filler rod technique. I'll put the link in the description below. So if this is the first one you're checking out of these series, be sure to jump back and check out part one. Just a quick refresher in that one, we talked about different technique as far as angle to put the filler rod in. We talked about how to properly clean a contaminated rod. Uh, keeping your stuff very clean is obviously very important. So make sure you check all that stuff out as well as a bunch of other stuff in that episode. I think that episode for, I gotta say, for an episode about TIG rods, uh, pretty simple thing. I think it was about a half hour long. So. I tend to talk too much, I apologize for that, but definitely a lot of info in that one. Uh, so jump back, check that one out if you haven't seen it already. But after posting that one, one of the most common questions I asked was uh, basically a variation of, that's great, thanks for the info, but how much filler rod do you actually put into a weld pool? So today, we're gonna go over exactly how much filler rod I use. Do I use a quick touch? Do I use a dab? Do I push the filler rod in? We're gonna go over that and I'm gonna do a demo with my machine here on some aluminum and you're gonna be able to see that for yourself. So, this is my TIG rod. What I've done is I've notched it by hand, super awkwardly, but I did it. <laughs> I've put a notch every eighth of an inch, about half a length of this TIG rod, uh, every eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters, but you can see I've done it all uh, by hand there. So. As I film uh, close up with the weld pass, uh, when I get the camera right in front of the weld, you'll be able to see exactly how much fill I'm putting into the weld pool. Okay, so we're gonna fire up the machine here. Now we'll just wait a sec for the fan to turn off here. There we go. Nice thing about this machine, the fan turns off after a few seconds. So today we're gonna to use the Canna Weld. It's the 201 Pulse D model. Nice little machine. I did a whole demo and review of this machine. The link is in my description. I'll put it down there so you can check it out. I gave an entire breakdown of this entire machine. So be sure to bounce on back to check that one out. But for settings, what we're gonna to do today, obviously we're gonna to change to alternating current because we're welding aluminum. Uh, we're gonna turn our amperage up. Let's turn that up to, uh, who knows? That's Probably more than enough, but that'll be a good start. Let's see here. No downslope. Uh, that's a lot of post flow. I'll turn that down a little bit. Should be good. Uh, balance, we're 35% positive. 100 hertz, that should be pretty much good for today on the frequency, uh, a little bit of pre-flow. No upslope, and then back to our amperage. So there we go. Pretty simple little setup. Uh, again, like I said, I definitely recommend you bounce back and check out the demo on this machine. If you haven't already, this machine is dope. Okay, so now that we got the machine running, uh, we're pretty much ready to go as far as that goes. I'll just give a quick little rundown of what I'm using for a torch, and then we'll go into it from there. Okay, so a pretty basic torch setup here. I'm just running a 26 style torch. This is not a CK torch, but uh, basically one very similar to it. So. I'm running a number eight cup. Uh, this is from Furick, Michael Furick. Check out uh, his Instagram and everything that he offers as far as gas uh, supply systems for your TIG torch. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, but we're running a number eight cup, uh, basically running a 332 tungsten setup. The tungsten is a lanthanated tungsten, a 2% lanthanated. And I'm just running a very basic gas lens system. So it's, uh, like I said, uh, pretty straightforward. 332, 2% lanthanated tungsten, gas lens setup number eight cup put all that together we're styling and we're ready to rock okay so one thing i wanted to go through first here is uh basically i'm going to explain this 
before we actually do the weld pass so you can kind of see what I mean and then uh, we'll light it up and we'll go from there. So I've got this piece of scrap here. This is basically a piece of scrap I just run a couple beads on before I do a demo for my channel or a welding project here in my little studio at my house. But basically what I'm gonna do is I just wanted to show everybody out there where exactly we put the filler rod in. So my filler rod has a little bit of a point on it here so I'll just use that as an example of pointing where I end up putting the fill in. But basically, I think a lot of people assume, from what I've talked to at least, and the students in my uh, online training program have trouble with, is they always tend to try to put the fill in right at the edge, and then expect that the weld pool will suck the filler rod in. Uh, it'll deflect your arc cone, you'll tend to get some weird uh, contamination to either side if you go too deep into the puddle. If anybody's noticing that they try to put their filler rod into the weld pool, and it just melts off. They get this like deflated looking balloon thing on the end of their TIG rod. It's really frustrating. But what that is basically is you are not putting your filler rod into the weld pool enough. So like I said, we don't want to go too far in that we start to deflect the arc with our TIG rod or filler rod, but we don't want to go too far out that it just melts off. We want to go pretty much just shy of inside. So not quite half the distance to the center of the puddle, but just a little bit shy. So we want to make sure we put it in a little bit further in but like I said, not too far. So there's a fine line right there. And again, with different amperage, if you're welding a hotter weld or a cooler one, if you're running a thinner wire, this uh, TIG rod we're using is 1 8 uh, 3.2 millimeter TIG wire or TIG rod, whatever you wanna call it. So again, there's gonna be variables that slightly change for uh, depending on what diameter you're using, as well as, like I said, amperage settings and whatnot. There are gonna be variables, but basically those are two rules of thumb I tend to follow. I find if I go too far into the weld puddle, uh, like I said, it'll cause a little bit of arc deflection uh, and I'll have trouble really getting a clean weld because I'll be blocking a little bit of the gas supply I find and it tends to blow off a little bit of contamination. Again, situational, uh, but this is kind of just a rule of thumb of something I try and avoid. And then the other side of that spectrum, like I said, is I also try as a rule of thumb to avoid putting it too far out of the weld puddle because like I said, you're not gonna get a clean break off and then it's gonna get pulled into the weld. It, that won't happen if you're not close enough. So a good way I like to tell if your filler rod is going in perfectly or not, you'll tend to have something that looks like the end of this TIG rod here. You'll have a little tiny point. Basically, if you see something like this, then you are definitely putting your filler rod in just as you should be. If, like I said, you're seeing a like deflated looking balloon or something weird hanging off the end or it's half melted but half still stuck to it, you need to get into the weld a little bit more. So again, this is just preference for what I like to do, but uh, what we're gonna do is now we're set up. I'll explain that a little bit. We'll run a couple beads and you can see uh, how much filler rod I put into the weld pool. Okay, so I've got a piece of quarter inch plate here. Uh, that's 6.4 millimeters or so. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run my bead from about here to about here. And then uh, what we'll do is I'll stop and take a look at it and we'll see how much filler rod I use. But basically, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light up, get my arc going real here, real nice. I'm gonna wait for it to sit down properly. And then I'm gonna start moving and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm nice and comfortable, ready to light up my arc here. So here we go. Okay, so taking a look at that weld, that all went pretty good. Uh, as far as the width of that weld overall, you can see it worked out to be about eight or nine mil wide. So it's a pretty decent sized weld, nothing too big. But overall, the cleanliness of it was real good. The edges wetted in nice and straight, which is good. I'm pretty happy about that for sure. But like I said, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna watch the weld over again and I'll kind of just see how it looks and uh, we'll go from there.
All right, so here we go. So as you can see, I waited a really, really long time for the arc to actually do what I wanted it to. I really wanted that puddle to sit down, so I just gave it a quick dab there. Uh, again, you saw how much fill went into that. It was not much at all. It was just a quick, quick kiss uh, to give it a little bit of filler. So now I'm blending the filler rod in. I'm just waiting for the puddle to really sit down. You can see I'm doing a little bit of a wiggle back and forth, giving it a little more fill now. And you can tell I'm happy with it now, but look how much fill I'm actually putting in. So those dabs are again, like I said, an eighth of an inch apart, three mil, and I'm doing less than one dab, or less than one notch each dab. My filler rod stays in nice and tight, but again, it doesn't get too far out. And you can see, I'm going into the weld pool a little bit. I'm just crossing over it, just crossing over it, sorry. And it's going into the weld pool, not on the edge of it, on the outside of the arc cone. But again, not so far into it that I'm going to cause uh, arc deflection or a problem with the gas coverage. Nice little swirl out there. Yeah, okay, that turned out all right. But there you go. So we saw how that weld was done. Oh, geez, that's still real hot. But basically, yep, there you can see it. So uh, you can watch that as many times as you'd like. And watch the filler rod technique as far as how it goes into the weld pool. So that turned out decently. You can see the arc footage was okay. Uh, I'm still perfecting that as I go, obviously. Uh, but overall, you kind of get a feel for how much filler rod I'm putting into it there. You can actually watch as the notches clip by, which is kind of cool to see. So again, I hope I clarified that. Uh, it was kind of cool to follow up that video with a few things I wish I did in the first one, but hey, uh, I got nothing but time on this channel here. I love goofing around with TIG welding stuff, TIG welding tricks, uh, cool little questions that I get. Again, that was numerous people mentioning it in the comments and on my Instagram as well. So if you have any ideas or anything you'd like to see me demonstrate, any types of weld joints, any kinds of tricks, any different gear setups or anything like that, comment below. Uh, I'll try and get back to you. I do read all the comments, but I don't reply to everybody because it's getting a little bit fast and furious. Um, and I just, I can't keep up with it all the time. If you leave a comment below, I will read it. Uh, another great way to get a hold of me directly, and I will message back guaranteed on this, uh, at least for now. Uh, hit me up on direct message through Instagram. My Instagram handle is right there, right there. Check it out, uh, visit me on social media, follow me on Instagram, say what's up. Uh, again, just connect with me, I like talking with people. Uh, again, if you haven't already, check out my website. Website address is right there, pacificarctigwelding.com. I got an image gallery on there for all my art pieces I do. Uh, I have a TIG welding blog. I just blather on about TIG welding related stuff and what I'm up to in this little studio here, as well as my online training program. My online training program is going really well. I'm super stoked on all the students that are in it right now. We're doing really well and having a good time. Uh, it's a TIG welding program for beginners. We're going through it all one by one right now and ticking off the lessons and it's really fun. It's going real well so far. But again, follow me on social media, check out my website. Uh, again, I really, really appreciate anybody that watches these videos, especially all the way to the end. Again, I hope everybody's doing all right out there. Uh, regardless though, I hope you're doing all right. I really thank you a lot for watching my episode here today. Uh, random act of kindness for a stranger. It's a little challenge I issue at the end of all my episodes now is, uh, yeah, do something nice for a stranger. Random act of kindness. Uh, write something nice on some total stranger's Instagram profile or whatever. Just do something nice, spread some positivity. That's what we need right now uh, and that's what my channel is all about so again my name is dusty thank you so much for watching this episode here today on pacific arctic welding have a good one peace